got a cool gadget to unbox and show off for you guys. I'm keeping it a secret until we get into the video because I think you guys will agree this gadget's kind of cool. Let's check it out. I received a package from Amazon. I wonder what I got. Let's find out. What did I receive from Amazon? Hmm. This is a mystery. It's nicely wrapped up. Hmm. It has a cleaning cloth of some type. What exactly is in here? Got a couple packages in here. A grip and a mount of some type. Hmm. Looks like it would hold a smartphone or something, doesn't it? Although it'd be a pretty small fart smartphone these days. That looks like a grip for a camcorder. A grip for a camcorder? Hmm. Or a grip for a smartphone. What the heck is in this thing? It says, In the Ray. What could this be? This could be something interesting. What the heck did I get sent? Oh, look, I damaged the box already. It's a thermal imaging camera for my smartphone. Comes with a USB-C extension cable with a right angle on it. I guess that's to plug it into the phone. This is a thermal imaging camera. Cool. Let's see how it works. Obviously what this grip is for is obviously to hold your uh, phone and then the other one is for the thermal imaging camera which would clip into this other side and then the little cable will connect it to the phone that's how that works I'm guessing I haven't opened up the owner's manual yet but I just put two and two together and come up with four because you know I'm rather intelligent at least that's what people tell me so first things first, let's install the software. I'm just going to take my phone out of here just momentarily just so that it makes it a little easier. Go to the App Store and search out the Xtherm software. So I'm going to go to my uh, Google Store and search out Xtherm. And that's the one by Infrared, I guess it's pronounced Infrared or Infrared. Anyway, we're going to install this. And then once it's installed, I'm going to plug the camera in and uh, click yes on the pop up. So let's let the app install. And while I'm doing that, I'll get the connection cable and everything ready to go. And get the camera ready to pop up. I should add that it can plug right into the bottom of the phone as well but some phones like I have a case on mine so that might make it a little more convenient to use the cable and use the bracket. Also if you're walking around and looking for heat signatures and so forth it makes it make it a lot easier if you're actually using the grip. 
Okay, software is uh, installing right now, so just give it a minute here. So now I've got the software installed, I'm going to plug the USB cable into my phone and do this in real time so we can see what happens. Do I have to open the app first? No, I don't. It's going to ask me to use the infrared, always. And, uh, <laughs> um, okay, uh, we have a problem, Houston, because it appears that my phone is not compatible. It says this version is not compatible. Please download the adapted version. So I have to go and get the adapted version, I guess, for my phone for Android 10. Okay, uh, back to the drawing board. So here's the APK. It's going to send me to get the APK for the for Android 10. I could install this on my other phone because it's got Android 11, but I'm not using that phone yet, so I have a brand new phone sitting in a box, but I'm not going to turn it on and use it until this phone dies. And this phone's still got lots of life left in it because the battery still lasts for most of the day. Okay, the file is downloaded. Let's open it. Oh, give me a break. Allow from the source. All right, let's install the update. So this is obviously an update that they put out for the older operating systems because there's still lots of us running Android 10. I can assure you that not everybody is upgraded today. There's still lots of us running Windows um, 7 for that matter. App not installed. Why did it not install? Well, that's interesting. Let's go back and see where my downloaded files were because I know it went into my downloads if I can find it here. Okay, what I've done is I just I removed the app and um, reinstalled it like I uninstalled the bad version rather than try to update it and I'm now going to try and run this version here. And see whether it works. Add it out from my file manager. See if this version is now installed. Yeah, it looks like it installed. So we'll plug it in and we'll launch the app and see whether. It will work and it says allow and allow and allow. And it looks like it's going to work now. All right, there it is. There, oh, cool. Now, what's going on here? It's upside down. I gotta turn it around. Okay, there it is. Oh, look, my hand is glowing. That is wild. It is working. Let's just see. Let's look around on my bench here and see what is uh, what's hot. Oh, look, the wall warts. The wall warts over there, you can see the heat on the wall warts. We can adjust the focus on the camera here as well. There's a little focus control. So we can adjust the focus. So there we go. Let's see. We can see anything that's hot over here. So there's three wall warts. Actually, there's four wall warts. And you can see the heat that they are giving off. It's going to reposition the camera so we can get a better shot of the phone screen. Actually, you know what? I can do this. I can tip the screen up and I can loosen off the, the little infrared camera here and point it up so that now we have a better shot. So there we go, we're, we're actually seeing the heat coming off of the uh, wall warts, the, the switching power supplies. You can see that there are four of them right there. They are right there on the wall. There they are. There's three of them on one power strip and one on the other, and there they are, clear as day, on the infrared camera. So let's look around in the shop here and see other things that are putting off heat. If we look around my bench, if I pan the camera up, you'll see that, uh, well, that, that big white thing there, that's the LCD screen. It's given off a lot of heat. This one here is the, uh, I'm pointing at, that's the little CRT monitor that displays the time. And of course, it's not giving off much in the way of heat. Either is the amplifier or anything else that's turned on because they haven't been turned on all that long. Everything else in here is relatively cool. So on the screen, there's a little setup button over here. Temperature, so it's a thermometer. First of all, when you tap it, there's a couple things you can do. One, you can uh, 
tap this one, it'll t t tell you the temperature. I think it's that one. Uh, maybe it's that one. Uh, there we go. So tapping the tapping the icon here, that'll give you the temperature readout. So whatever the little plus sign is on, that's the temperature. 32 degrees is my hand. If I pointed at this pair of uh, scissors, wherever the heck they are, they are at uh, 24 degrees. If I pointed at the wall, for example, the wall word is 23. Well, that wasn't the wall word. Here it is. 25 degrees. This one here. Do not shine the lens directly at the sun. Yeah, you think? <laughs> yeah, you think, yeah, you don't shine this at the sun or any other bright sources of light, like bright incandescent lights. Uh, you'll burn the sensor out. It's a heat detector after all. So in other words, you keep it in the case when you're not using it. But uh, 23 degrees is that, that wall wart. And if I were to uh, make that dim bulb glow, it would give me the temperature of that as well. T to turn off the, the on-screen display of your temperature. Now, what does this one do? Does this one give you, this one gives you multiple, right? So that one gives you multiple. So we're looking at different, uh, different things. You'll find the hottest on the scene. If I turn on my soldering iron, let's let, let's let that go on and watch that thing heat up. That's right right here. And I'm going to get that warning again. Okay, we can see the soldering iron starting to heat up now. You see, it's going to be glowing red hot pretty quick here as the temperature continues to go up. I think it didn't like the fact that I was pointing this at my soldering iron. It must be too hot. Because it's, uh, you know, as soon as I get anywhere near the soldering iron, I'm getting that warning. So, obviously, 700 degrees Fahrenheit is too hot for the, the unit. And if I tap over here on the screen, I can pick the range. So this is in the higher temperature range now. I've turned the iron off and it's uh, now cooling down. As you can see, it's cooling down now. We can change our temperature range. We're in the 120 to 400 Celsius now. And then we turn it down here, and the next one is, uh, this one is minus 20 to 120 Celsius. So the settings are minus 20 to 120, and then, the, and then we're on the, uh, the 120 to 400, and then back to the, to the minus 20 to 120. As you can see, we're down at 90 degrees now. This is cooling down. So don't point one of these at, a, at an incandescent light bulb. It wouldn't do it any good. This is for looking at relatively you know, cool. And if you do point it at something that is that is hot, it's going to give you that warning that uh, says, you know, don't do this because you can damage the sensor. Other features on here, if we want to take a picture, if I do that, I'm sure that's going to take a snapshot. And if I want to look at video, I can hit that one, and now it's going to record video of everything that I'm doing. I don't know what this one here does. Is that just a... Well, that just freezes it. Okay. 
it takes a freeze frame. So we're going to look at some video right off the camera momentarily. It takes a snapshot too. But we're recording video now of this. So if I wave my hand in front, I don't know where the video is stored. Probably in the regular standard director and standard uh, camera folder. But as you can see, it records. And that's pretty much, I think, all I can show you on this thing. It's this little infrared camera. I'll put a link in the description to where I got this from. And if I stop the recording, just do that. And if I bail out of the program, this should show up. I would think it's going to show up in my gallery. Does it? Yes, it does. So if I bring up the gallery, there's a picture there. Another still photo there. And then, of course, the video. So that's pretty much it. He puts their logo up on the on the video that you record so that way when you're out in the field if you need to make a recording of a heat signature you can uh, record it on your phone and have a record of it all right let's take a look at footage right off of the camera one and now it's going to record video of everything that i'm doing i don't know what this one here does is that just a well that just freezes it okay that takes a freeze frame. Let's see how warm she really is. Cat, you look freaky in infrared. Yeah, you do. You look very freaky in infrared. Another cat sitting on a speaker. That's my stereo system. It's not on, so what you see glowing down there is the um, a little boost. If I turn on my amplifier here, this is the tube amp that's now starting to warm up. And you'll see the Vacuum tubes warming up. We keep getting the warning about pointing it at hot objects. As you can see, the tubes are starting to get warm now. I'll probably get the warning again about pointing it at hot objects momentarily. Crazy cat. Cats are uh, driving me crazy. Everywhere I go, if I step out of the workshop, I've got cats following me around. Everywhere I go. So as you can see, the tubes are getting pretty warm now. Take it outside. Now this is just the thermal radiation coming off of my car. So it also will record outside again because it's only looking at long wave infrared radiation. see the black on the tires is is hot from the sun heating it versus the aluminum wheels which are relatively cool comparatively speaking the black parts on my car obviously are going to be hotter than the uh, the silver portion
The solar panel there is sitting in the sun. It's hot, but everything else out here is a lot cooler. Adjust the focus on the camera. See, in a pitch black room, a cat would stand out like a sore thumb. Or, for that matter, anybody would stand out like a sore thumb. And unlike other devices such as night vision goggles and stuff that, well, a lot of them require an infrared source. Same with an infrared camera. Requires an infrared source to see infrared light. This detects heat, so it doesn't require any light whatsoever. I'm now in my equipment closet. It, there's no lights on in here at all. This is the cable box. You can see the heat coming off of that. My modem is hot. There's a hard drive back here for a media player, which is right there. Raspberry Pi, it's playing. That's what's playing media on. It's my modulated channels. And here's a modulator, and you can see the heat coming off this. Now, again, I'm in total darkness now. There is no light at all in here other than a couple little pilot lights. There is no light whatsoever yet. I can see the heat signature of the various things that are hot, that are running, such as the modulators. These are the commercial modulators here that are running, and they're throwing off heat. As you can see, they're all warm. But there's no, there's actually no lights on whatsoever in this closet. I don't know why this display, I guess that's just from the radiant heat, because it's an LCD screen, but it's off. It hasn't been on for... A long time. Oh, there's a transformer. Look at that wall ward. Look at how hot that is. That's a conventional, um, conventional class two wall ward. You can just see that thing glowing like crazy. There's another wall ward there. I think it's a wall ward. Yeah, that's another wall ward there. That's warm. An another cat giving me strange looks. That's cat number three. Here's a ceiling fan. You can see the heat around the motor. I wonder what happens if I light a burner on the stove. Uh, I guess that's a little too hot. It's giving me a warning right there. Oh, look at the smoke. Yeah, okay. That's the uh, heat coming off of the burner. <laughs> I'm not even pointing it at the flame. That's just... That's the smoke that's coming off of uh, off of a uh, a burner, gas burner. I'm getting all these warnings like crazy because that's what comes off of your gas range, folks. And that's not even the flame. I'll turn the flame down to minimum on here. It's still giving me the warning that it's too hot. I'm getting these warnings like crazy. That thing's turned down to minimum if I crank it up. This is the smoke that comes off of a flame off of a gas flame. Now I'm not aiming it at the flame. This is well above the flame. Like that's that's like a foot above it, above the flame. And you can just see the heat coming off that thing. It's just like I'm aiming this right up. If I turn on the fan, You'll see the uh, smoke getting drawn towards the fan. And the, the burner's off now, but you'll see that the... Uh, The stove is still red hot from when it was running. If I bring the camera up here a bit, I'm still recording, I think. Am I recording? Yeah, I am. You can still see that it's hot as anything. I keep getting the alert on the screen here, so I don't know if it's still recording when the alert is there, but... If I block the burner with my hand, you can see how hot that burner was even though I've turned it off. It's still hot, and I'll get that. Uh, I'll get that warning to tell me that it's too hot. 
So I hope you enjoyed a look at this little far end infrared camera. I'll get you guys a close up of the actual camera itself before I close off the video. So this is the Xtherm 2. It captures 256 by 192 on 12 micrometers. I think it's what it says 12, 12 micrometers on the lens there. Anyway, that's that's the unit itself. The focus is adjusted by just turning the lens slightly to adjust your focus. And that's just how it connects to the camera. This is a look from my electrical panel. See now that things are starting to we're starting to use power and you can see some of the breakers are warmer than others. And that's the advantage of our thermal imaging camera. It lets you look for things that are hot, like hot pipes, hot wires, hot breakers, etc. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and the link will be in the description. We'll catch you in the next one.